Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Chris Ferguson, and I'm your host. If you've championed yourself, who are you? It has always been a dream of mine to showcase ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life for themselves and for others and to humanity. Those are the ones who have taken their dreams and ideas and turned it into their reality. As they reach beyond their personal struggles, their pains, their traumas, where so many people just give up, they lose hope. There's so few that can walk through their obstacles and their challenges. But, you know, they don't know where they're going. They don't know where it's going to take them. They just trust themselves enough to not give up, to do the follow through in personal life, career, and in their relationships. This is what I call a champion. Today, I have an amazing lady. Her name is Irina. I'm not even going to pronounce her last name. I'll let her do that because... Um, I don't want to start an international incident, so I'll just put it that way. So let's welcome Ir Irina to the podcast today. She's an amazing, she's an NLP, she's a timeline um, therapy. She's got so much we need to talk about. Hello. Hello, Chris, and thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Please pronounce your last name for me. Shehovtsov. Okay, I would have ruined that. I would have I would have ruined that. I apologize. And so I'm just I'm very transparent. So I'd rather you know that I'm not going to say it and, and instead of offending somebody because my husband says don't speak a foreign language, it's you'll start an international incident. So I'm like, okay, I won't do that. I won't do that. So this morning, I'd like to talk about your backstory. What was going on then that made you become who you are today? Sure. Uh, so I became a single parent of a newborn and a five-year-old. And this was uh, seven years ago. And I was broken down physically from giving birth and emotionally from betrayal and trying to keep it all together because I wanted my son, because I was breastfeeding, I didn't want my son to lose milk. So I, I kind of had two pieces that I had to piece together. And uh, I was living in the depressive state of mind. I was broken down. I was dropping off one kid in nursery and another in a school and bawling my eyes out on the train as I was rushing to work and asking myself, is this what life all about? Do we mm -hmm. come here to suffer? In my uh, relationship, I managed to lose myself in the process. I was someone else's wife. I was someone else's mom. But who was I? So there was this loss of identity crisis. And another thing is that I was always a compliant person, a quiet person. I didn't want to cause uh, trouble or struggle. So oftentimes not speaking out my truth, mm. not, uh, you know, just going through the day, plastering on a smile and going through it, but not actually being present and not feeling I remember when my daughter was work, walking or uttered her first words because I was in much better emotional state versus with my son. Yes, I was there, but it's not doesn't strike such a memory like with my daughter. And uh, I was waiting for an, a year for somebody to come save me and rescue me from all of my <laughs> destructive thoughts. <laughs> and of course, nobody did. And so... <laughs> I embarked on a journey of personal development and growth. And through that, I discovered, uh, because I, first of all, I told myself that I cannot live like that any longer. I needed the energy because my kids are getting stronger. And what kind of person am I being? If I'm not happy, they're gonna, not going to be happy as well. Mm -hmm. And so I started piecing myself together. And one of the greatest things I did, better than uh, any psychotherapy ever did for me, was learning how to sing. I got on myself a voice coach and I was able to sing what I couldn't speak. I also joined Toastmasters and was able to open up my voice and being comfortable with being uncomfortable. In fact, speaking here with you today. <laughs> well, just so you know, I'm the president of my Toastmasters club currently where I live. So oh, we, we have a lot of synchronicities here. It's just what I'm trying to point out. Yeah. It's just, and, and it is getting beyond being uncomfortable to speak. Yeah. And then I also concentrated on various aspects as I see it now 
happiness is consistent of four state of beings physical emotional mental and spiritual and so i was starting to eat healthy exercise the first thing i ever did was opening the threshold of my door and stepping over the threshold and taking myself on a walk mm. it could be nothing could be so inconsequential but this was my first step towards the new version of me however long ago it was and then uh, through learning through attending seminars and reading book was books what culminated when i was in phoenix arizona in september 2019 it was my first ever live event and there was even carmichael on stage a youtuber from canada who said there is not enough belief in this world today and you should help somebody who is a step behind you and that's the person who i wanted to help that broken down version of myself who i used to be two years uh, five years prior coming to that summit that's the person I wanted to help. And so in uh, 2020, Reclaim Your Life was born. That's the company name. And uh, it all started with me creating a happiness academy uh, online course, which consists of physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual to become so the person can be happy again by addressing those things. Just like electric plant generates electricity, we can generate happiness from within. We don't need some external event, a circumstance, a person to fulfill us. We are already whole. And it's a point of realizing that and being able to be with yourself, you know, practicing self-love and self-care. And I know maybe it sounds cliche, but... <laughs> it doesn't because every step that you said is has been a level up. Does that make sense? It, 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 you had to hit, you had to get to that point and feel comfortable enough to say, I'm okay now. And then it was becoming uncomfortable again and then leveling up and saying, okay, I'm, I'm okay now. I'm safe. And then it, it's leveling up. So you say it, it's like, oh yeah, just this, this, it wasn't that easy. So the fact is, is, is this is why I, I'm so excited that you're here today is because in your recovery of all of this breakup you addressed your mindset yes can you tell my audience how you did that because you don't seem to be in that victimhood mode and i i a lot of people go to that point whether they're male or female if they, if they broke up the relationship or they the other person broke up the relationship there's that oh why is this happening to me but i'm not getting that from you i'm getting not uh, no what's the lesson here yes yeah i started uh, i completed my nlp studies and timeline therapy and that helped me realize even before before nlp but after this nlp it kind of solidified that point that any event in a life could be viewed as a lesson we all come here to grow to learn and when we are an observer of a situation as opposed to being in the situation we get to see a different purpose of it like what did we learn and also instituting practices like meditation forgiveness and forgiveness is not forgiving others it's forgiving mm -hmm. first of all yourself mm -hmm. the person you were because we always operate to the best of our abilities with the resources we have available so we cannot go back and change the past unless we have a time machine but we can definitely change our future by being present in the now uh, by you know reading Eckhart Tolle and you know we don't really have the past or the future and we really need to savor the moment whether it's a beautiful sunrise or a smile on your child's face or you're eating that beautiful piece of food that maybe you enjoy and savoring and slowing things down because life is so fast and we live in that such fast-paced world and mm -hmm. this technology advancements it just keeps escalating and our mind is not able to catch up with that so we do need to slow down mm -hmm. and and just savor the moment so by instituting all those things and NLP, of course, help with and timeline therapy with removing negative emotions and limiting decisions and being able to analyze the language, like how we speak to ourselves. It is so important. We could be our greatest cheerleader or we could be our greatest punisher because we are all wrapped in one, the judger, the executioner, the performer. <laughs> the <laughs> we, critic. The show, yes. we watch the show and then we, we judge the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In one thought, you and suck. No, exactly. It's that one thought. Oh, I suck. Okay, there it is. Boom. Yeah. In one, in, one, in two words, you you just totally wipe out all your accomplishments. Yes, and uh, I'm also reading a, a book by uh, Marisa Peer. Tell yourself a better lie. 
uh, where she talks about there is a whole uh, kind of a bandwagon of thoughts that we get on. First it's a thought, then it's a behavior, then it's an action, and then it becomes a loop. And our mind in its infinite ability to please always are going to deliver what we are looking for. So whether we're looking something, because those negative thoughts, they are not really true. But if we believe them, they right. become true. So not only that, but the thoughts that we have can bring negativity to us because that's the vibration we're free that we're vibrating at. So it's saying, okay, I need more negativity here. So that's what you start attracting to yourself. And then you just get hit by this barrage of craziness. You're like, where did this come from? Well, okay. I kind of like brought it to myself, didn't I? Yes. Yes. So putting all those pieces together, you know, uh, practicing how I, I talk to myself also exercising i recommend people do practice 10 minutes of joy every day to maintain good level of happiness just like we brush a teeth mm -hmm. to have good oral hygiene if you want to be happy practice 10 minutes of joy <laughs> some, people, some people don't realize that you know and i i do what it, they call miracle mornings and it's a discipline practice that i do every morning but it's not necessarily, you don't have to go out and run a mile. You don't have to run, you know, do, do, do 200 pounds. I mean, I used to lift 200 pounds in, in bench press. Oh, 200 wow. pounds. So it's nothing like that. It could just be stretches. It could just be simple yoga poses to get your muscles stretching be, beyond their comfort zone and then coming back and, and getting the energy flowing through you. So I absolutely agree with you. It is about your practice and your discipline. Yeah, the morning routine I also practice and I do agree with you. It's all about not when you wake up, but how you wake up, the intention mm -hmm. you set yourself and whatever your routine is, whatever works for you, if you do it consistently mm -hmm. to sustain yourself, that's amazing. Another important point is surrounding yourself with positive people or people who you want to be like because you are the product of five people who you surround yourself with. And if you don't have that circle now, go out and find it. And I found my circle through joining those various groups, Toastmasters. I also started dancing. So I was uh, Argentine tango dancing and I was able to form a group of people who share in the same interest. Mm -hmm. I also did singing. So I found those group of people and then personal development. I joined Mind Valley and I found a, a group of people there. So we are multidimensional beings and it's important to feel all those slots so, so so that you thrive so that you develop uh, your, yourself better and uh, it is it, it is and but the thing is is you talked about that you did this you did that but what got you to that point it, it wasn't like okay today i'm gonna go dancing <laughs> um, or i'm gonna go do nlp or i'm gonna learn time timeline therapy there had to have been that moment in you that said, I want something more. Yes. And so in wanting that more, was it your mindset you changed? Was it, did you put boundaries down all of a sudden that you weren't putting down before? Were you taking away the excuses you were telling yourself? Yes. I wanted to be happy. Simple as that. I love that. I love that. That's a great answer. I love that. But the fact is, is, is to say, I want to be happy. So many people are like, how, how, how do I want to be happy? Because there's the next step because everything, everything has a start. Everything has a motivator. Everything has that. Oh, I'm committed. Now I'm disciplined and oh my gosh, I've arrived. Yes. So <laughs> It's a journey. It's a journey. Uh, so for me, it's all started with physical me opening the door. And mm -hmm. first of all, realizing that however I was leaning was no longer working and I wasn't overweight or anything. I just wanted to have a better overall well-being. And I started with physical because it's something we can so easily relate to. It's something we see in the mirror. So I started first walking. Then I changed my diet. I listened to a PhD professor describe the process of nutrition from a chemical perspective. And I turned veg vegetarian after that. I'm not vegetarian no longer, but at that point in my life, I became a vegetarian and I lost 10 pounds, although this was not my intention. My intention was to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And once I fulfilled those needs, then I started working on emotions and uh, 
so starting uh, practices like forgiveness and meditation and surrounding myself with people who share the same interests so i joined uh, toastmasters i joined uh, uh, dancing and the painting how did you get to come to like yourself again because there was i i as a woman, a lot of times we do the blame, shame, guilt. And in that process of blame, shame, and guilt, we kind of lose ourselves. Well, I lost myself during the relationship. I no longer knew who I was. I was someone else's mom. I was someone else's wife. But who was I? Who, mm -hmm. who am I? What am I all about? Mm -hmm. Why am I here? What is my purpose? Why am I here living? And... I know we don't come here to suffer. I think we come here to learn, to become better, to evolve, and then share a message because our story could be someone else's uh, page and someone else's survival guide. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am That's here to share my story and help uh, others recover faster. Well, and, and I, I, I understand that. But the thing is, is one of the things I think when you said you started out with physical, when I was going through mine, I started out with emotional. I went, I naturally just went within and saying, you know, this isn't who I am. This is, I'm, I can't define myself by this. So how am I going to define myself by? And then that's when I did my physical to do the different things, but I've had different circumstances. I just go do. I don't think about it. I don't overthink it. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't say, well, what, have, what are the woulda, coulda, shouldas? Don't do that. I don't do that. I don't think, you know, can you, it's, I, okay, let me show you. And that's, that's the difference a lot of people don't have because when they overthink things. So when you got out of the, the physical to the emotional, how did you get out of the overthinking and the guilt, the blame, the shame? I think what helped me Mel, Mel Robbins and her five, four, three, two, one rule, you know, we, we only have five seconds to make a decision before our mind will talk us out of it. <laughs> and I was fascinated by her story, how she come up with that rule when she was in her own slump and, you know, and she come up with this, like, imagine that you are a rocket ship and starting off anytime you don't want to do anything. So it started with me waking up earlier and, uh, you know, not browsing my social media and limiting my intention. I think when we unload ourselves, we have so many things and we are so busy. But setting the intention in the morning and spending that time with yourself will clear your mind. I also did during my walks, uh, Tony Robbins have his uh, power hour. So I would <laughs> walk and, and not just, and I love watching sunrises. So I would see the sunrise come up and I feel like the day is being born and I didn't miss anything. And while I walk, I also clear my mind. I get to appreciate the nature, the beauty, the air, the sun, the clouds. And the fact that my body is cooperating with me and making me <laughs> able to walk and practicing. So on my walk, I was able to kind of recite what I envision my life to be, what I envision my kids to be. And mm. some of it actually came true, believe it or not, because I did it repeatedly every day, like a mantra. I would yes. go clear yes. my mind, exercise my body, feel amazing. I find that when I did it, I felt less reactive. I felt so much more present. And excited for the day, then when I had to get my kids ready for school, I was centered, organized, <laughs> no focused, old breaks. focused. <laughs> focused. That's right. But the thing is, is this is this. I'm I I um I'm a manifestation specialist. That's what I do is in my business, mm -hmm. and it is about where you put your attention to. It's when you visualize it, when you raise your vibration level to that. You see it, you feel it, you taste it, and you're doing it, that it manifests. Yes. And so you didn't, I pro you probably didn't realize that you were doing this, but that's what you were, you were doing at the time was actually creating the life you wanted to live. Because when you empower people through spiritual, mental, and emotional to attract, attract clarity in their lives, they start manifesting the life of their dreams. And that's my motto in my business because it is about mental, emotional, physical, and achieving clarity. So I'm I'm honored. I'm honored because so many women 
who've been in your circumstances haven't been able to get that clarity, haven't been able to reach out and, and don't, and I love the fact of modern technology has come so far because when I was younger, we didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have beepers. We didn't have any of that. And you probably don't know what a beeper is, but it's okay. I know. Because <laughs> it was probably before your time. My daughter, she, 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 she was like, I want a beeper. I want a beeper. It's like, no. <laughs> I remember a rotary phone too. Uh, well, see, now most people do, uh, you know, as you get, depending on where you lived in the world and where you lived as far as economics, a lot of people had the rotary phones. And it was a, it was an honor to have a push button phone because they were so much easier and so much faster to, to, to dial. And it was like, oh, but I, I mean, I don't think, I think through the 70s, I kept a rotary phone. So, and it was just like, now most people are like, Rotary, what? Yeah, guess what? <laughs> guess what? We didn't have that. So, but in all of your, in all the things that you've done, the one thing I wanted to talk to you about, can you explain to my audi audience the limitless living? Sure. I believe we are all limitless. Once we remove ourselves from the equation and rewire our mindset, I, I believe it's all about living dreaming and growing and living meaning have a longevity have a sustainable lifestyle that you exercise and you eat right and dreaming is going after your dreams because our dreams are always there they're always waiting for us and it's we who give up on them too soon it's we who don't follow and uh, the richest place on earth is actually the cemetery for people who weren't brave enough to share there may be cancer research or maybe next breakthrough in whatever uh, uh, modality it was. So sharing your dreams and following your dreams is important. And last part is growing. And I believe we're all students. We can never learn enough. So continuously learning and evolving little by little to attain the limitless living. Rewire your mindset, practice positive things, practice meditation and forgiveness. Forgiveness you can practice every single day because anytime you have a grudge about something, let's say you had a conversation with your spouse or your kid and didn't feel so good, forgive that situation that day right there when it happened, like the night, the night, at night or in the morning <laughs> so that you have clean slate. So you create those routines in your life to have a sustainable living by practicing those things like meditation, forgiveness, amazing morning routine. Yeah, well, there's some, there's some, it, I, the forgiveness was one of my biggest things I had to learn as a young child. My brother was killed by a drunk driver. I'm sorry. And thank you. And he was never, there was no justice for my brother's death. His family helped him cover it up and three people were injured and, I was prepared to avenge my brother's death. So when you say forgiveness and when you talk about an argument, there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of more difficult things to understand, to forgive and get beyond that avenging your brother's death. The thing that saved me was that I had just had a daughter. She was a year old. And in fact, she was a year and, and year, one year old and maybe a half a month when this happened and I was like, I, I need to avenge my brother's death. And then I thought, Oh my gosh, if I avenge my brother's death, I'm going to abandon my daughter. Like I was abandoned. So the fact is, is when forgiveness comes, the situation is different, but I believe that if you can forgive the man that murdered your brother, you've now reached unconditional love. Because you see people as they are. They're human beings making bad decisions. I don't excuse his behaviors. I don't excuse his family's behaviors. Mm -hmm. But that's not for me to get justice for. That's to leave it up to the creator. So I have a, a little different view of it. So forgiveness means something different to me. Because I had to allow all that anger to go. And that's like I said, that's why I started going within because it was the anger. It was the thoughts of revenge and avenging his death and getting justice in my heart for what had happened. So when you forgive, it, it depends on the level. And there's a lot of people out there, unfortunately, and I say this unfortunately, that have a lot of 
heavy forgiveness to do. And, and part of that lesson is to realize is that you put more weight on you than anybody else. And so forgiveness is, is, is a huge thing for a lot of people to get beyond and some don't. And so I, I always wish for everybody that they always know that love, if it comes from love, it can't offend, it can't hurt. And it allows you to see everybody as human beings and then see their behaviors as something else. Yes. Yes. And forgiveness, it's not about forgiving the other person, but forgiving mm -hmm. for yourself. Releasing you of that, those emotions holding that. Yes, it is. That's I, I, I so love that Irana. So how, when you got to your happiness, what did it feel like? I felt so much better than than I when I was in my twenties, mm. <laughs> because you get to see the world in a different uh, view, mm. and you're not obsessed anymore. You're not doing the shuda kuda wuda. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just being present, and you're enjoying, and you're savoring, and you're great, being grateful for what you have and where you are. It felt incredible. Uh, that's that's good. I'm I'm so so because when I ask that question, usually some, most people say I don't know. One day I just decided to be happy, and I think you said that earlier on in in the podcast. Yeah. But it had to have been the journey to it, and the path, and the different experiences that got you to that point. And all of a sudden, you're like, man, there's just too much junk in the world. This can't be life. Yes, and the life is too short to go on living mm. unhappy. We only have. You know, there is a, the dot when you were born, and then there is a dash, and then the year of your death. So we have a very limited time here. Why not spend this time being happy? And I'm not saying happy having uni unicorns and rainbows all the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, we do encounter situations in our life, but it's how we react to the situation. Because mm -hmm. happiness is not a, uh, a destination. It's a way of living. It's a mm -hmm. journey that we take ourselves on. And you yeah. get to, every morning when we wake up, we get to decide whether we want to be happy, miserable, or sad. Because it takes the same amount of energy for each one of those emotions. I love that. I love that because it is true that a sunrise is a new beginning. It's a new day for you to define what you want to be that day and what you want to be in your life. And I love the fact that you don't allow your past to define your future. And that's something that I also point out to people because they define themselves. They label themselves. People try to cancel people. And I don't even know how that happens. So, or understand it. I, maybe it's just my age, but I don't think so. It is a new be beginning. And every day is a day to say, to live your best life. And at the night say, thank you and have no regrets. Yeah. In fact, at night to fall asleep easier, say three things that went well today. Not all the things you couldn't have done, but what three things went well today? Mm -hmm. I Well, I kind of do some different, but it's the same premise. And it's like I always say, always, when you wake up, always ask yourself or ask the universe or God or creator, whatever you want to call that higher power. Creator, what does my best day look like? Show me. And then watch for the signs and symbols and synchronicities to come into your world because they show up in amazing ways. They show up. So you also do health and wellness. Yes. Can we talk about that? Sure. So I recently <laughs> completed last year a certification with Mind Valley Hollow Body Wellness. And it's all about eating right, access, moving your body. And what it takes, so scientifically speaking, like whether you want to lose weight or you want to maintain longevity. Because I was already doing that before doing the program, but now I have the scientific backing behind it. So if people want to improve their overall well-being, it's all about longevity because you could live a long life, but if you are sick or if you are not in your best state, what kind of life is that? So mm. in this whole body, what they're trying to do is, you know how we have a sick care system where people, when they get sick, go to the hospital to get better. But what if we reverse that? It's all about preventative medicine and educating people in positive benefits of vitamin D, simple <laughs> movement, and good nutrition. <laughs> you know? 
I, 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 I absolutely agree with this because preventative per it's like, it's like getting a, a, a tune up for your car. Exactly. If you, if you get a tune up for your car, your car is going to maintain its, its ultimate performance and be able to stay in. It's going to take you wherever you want it to go. If you treat your car like junk, it's going to turn into junk. Yes. Like your body is the same way. I agree. I love the way you said that, but it's just like, I, that was just a thought that came to my head. It's like, man, this is just like the junk in the junkyard. You know, if you, if you don't take care of it, that's where you end up. Yeah. And I think of a body as a best performing machine. Cause imagine if you scrape your knee and you don't do nothing in seven days, you have a scab form. So we have this best performing vehicle. Imagine you are a Lamborghini, like you just mentioned and your best performing vehicle. You want to, you know, treat it right give enough oil and uh, do so it operates to the best possible ability so if you want a body to operate to the best possible ability then we need to be mindful of what we put in our body and how we move our body because through co uh, pandemic and we are kind of forced yeah. now being in more seating sedentary positions it's important movement is important whatever movement is for you they recommend for women to have at least 6,000 steps a day and for men uh, up to 12,000 steps a day in addition to other exercise routine, but whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. Because if our body does not, is not exercise, then we have, we end up, uh, uh, I forgot what, I, I think it's called sar sarconia. I forgot the right name, but mm -hmm. your muscles actually de deteriorate and your bones are atrophied. Your muscles atrophy. Mm -hmm. they, they lose their muscle tone. Exactly. What you're like, trying to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. if you don't use it, you lose it. Just yeah, like I, you, exactly. That's when exactly. you learn a new language and you don't practice it, you lose it. You don't that use that it. Matters, you, know? <laughs> you lose it. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the thing is, is it's funny you say that because how empathetic were you as a child? You weren't very much an empath, weren't you? Yes, I think so. And because of cultures and traditions, and, and those are just imaginary friends, did you quit listening to your intuition for a while? Yes. We all, we all do. We all do. See, this is, this is how we get programmed. This is how we get changed from who we were to what we're, what, control and, and, and programming and doc, indoctrination is. So you forget that, but everybody's intuitive. Everybody has that, that, that gut feeling, but when we don't listen to it, that gut feeling becomes the illness. It becomes the pain. It becomes the trauma. Yes. yes so you're, yeah. So it, what you said, I just amplified because it is so, it's so important in a person's life to understand that. Yes, we always it. have warning bells in our mind. And sometimes we choose to dismiss those warning bells. And then if we do that a year later, you're going to turn around, look at yourself. Like, how did I allow this to happen? Mm -hmm. You don't recognize yourself anymore. You're so busy being good for everybody else. You lose yourself in the process. Well, not only that, but the other thing is, is when you stay so busy, it's because you're afraid to be silent with yourself. So you don't want to go within and face you. That's the hardest thing because so many people say so busy and accomplish nothing than to just sit in quiet and sit in the stillness and just let whatever comes up, what a lot, you know, whatever surfaces say, why is this coming up? What is this? What is the lesson for me? Not why, but what's the lesson? Why is this showing up in my aura now? What's the lesson to it? Because I think, um, we, because of society and everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses, as they say, or have said for like 50 years since I, you know, in my lifetime. And it was, everybody's so busy doing minimal things and, and inconsequential things and not, and it's all materialistic instead of internal and being that better person. And I think now if we turn our intentions inside, we can still have all this other stuff, but it's the frequency we put out to accomplish it. And I think I, and, and your face is beaming right now because it, 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 it's exactly your journey that you took. It's exactly from going from, you know what? I feel like I've been drugged through the mud. I'm going to go take a shower now. 
I'm going to get all cleaned up and then I'm going to be looking my best me. And so that in a short, short little fort video, it's like, I get running around and rolling over in the mud like the kids did, you know, and, and then going in as a teenager, taking a shower, you're figuring it out, you're getting it done. And then as an adult, it's like adulting. And it's like, I don't want to do that today, but I got to get a shower. Yes. <laughs> I love, I just, I just, I just felt that coming from you. And I was like, okay, let me just put this out there because the short version of it is, is this is exactly what happens in many people's lives and they don't understand it. That's why I wanted you on my, on my podcast today. Because it is about the steps, the processes, the discipline, the practice. Yes. You um, can we talk about your business and 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 what is it called? The business is called Reclaim Your Life. And if somebody wanted to come and check you out, what what do, what do what do you do there? I do online courses. I have Happiness Academy. I have Self Love Academy. I have a monthly membership where we dive in deeper into Happiness Academy so that you can install the habits and make it part of your life. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And one-on-one, -on -one we work, uh, we're making a breakthrough coaching, basically, whether in business, personal, relationships. If you want to figure out what that's that problem and how do you want to change, let's say you feel not good enough. How do you feel good enough again? What does it look like? And we work, I work uh, directly one on one with that person. It could be done across 12 weeks or it could be done in a matter of three days, depending how soon you want to get transformed. Um, I also train, I got certified as a trainer last year. So I'm going to be running my own trainings. And the first one will be in May, certifying people in NLP and timeline therapy. Mm, I love that. I love that. I actually, we were talking before we got started that we have that connection there also. Um, in all the things that you've done, um, can you give my audience three tips how they can go from, I don't know what's going on to, I like who I am today? Sure. First of all, <laughs> through what we mentioned is practicing 10 minutes of joy every day, finding what it is that makes you happy and just going and doing that. I think 10 minutes is, is a little time and you are important enough to do that. Another uh, great point you can do, and this one I learned from Marisa Peer is writing on the mirror, you are enough, those three simple words. And then when you go up to the mirror, looking yourself in the eye and telling yourself, I love you, so that you can hear it, uh, hear it, say it, and feel it deep down in your heart. And re and by, by you reinforcing that vision, you know, visual, auditory, and spoken word, it creates a synergy for you inside and rewires your mind. And see what happens if you actually do practice that. Because you get to see it twice a day in the morning when you do your morning routine and in the evening before you roll for, down for bed. And the third thing, um, I think radical forgiveness is very, very important as we discussed already today. Whether it's something little, you know, let's say uh, you broke a vase and, and it was your favorite vase, or maybe you had an argument with somebody, just forgive yourself. I know it sounds easy, but sit down and if you establish this as a practice, as a way of living and being, you will be on, on your way to be a happier, less burdensome person. Mm -hmm. Because it's all baggage that we carry every time. Because the more we hold on to grudges, we kind of pile up piles of bricks on ourselves. And then it becomes difficult to walk through life with all of this baggage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's just recognizing and accepting the fact that it's not working and what am I going to do to fix it? I, I also have a podcast for single parent success stories. So if you're a single parent, you can check out the podcast. That's awesome. I, 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 I didn't know, no, I did not know as my, I'm stumbling here that you had a podcast, but I, the fact that you're reaching out and taking your experiences as a single parent to help other single parents. I love that. And it is all about serving others. And that is so important because that's where other, you could be that 
I think you said it earlier, but I, I think it, it resonated with me in another, another way is that your story can help somebody connect the dots in their story to figure out the, the, how to fix it, to empower them, not to, not to sympathize with them, but to empower them to their best versions of themselves. And I, I absolutely love that a lot. In life, with everything that you've gone through, what has been your busy, biggest, and this just came to me, your biggest accomplishment so far? The fact that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Believing in myself, no matter what, uh, even uh, despite naysayers, despite uh, like, what are you doing? And despite thinking that I was crazy until I find my people and I discover I'm not crazy. There are other people. <laughs> well, you were never crazy. And, and it's that you were sad. <laughs> not in the bad world, but yeah, different yeah. than everybody else. And not, yeah. not the people who went through my story, other divorced people or single parents, but people who went through a personal uh, dark night of the soul mm -hmm. come out on the other side and are thriving, are evolving, are doing good in the world, sharing their gifts. And yes. I love that. I love that. So, okay. For, for my last question, let's take a deep breath in, hold it. And I want you to connect with your inner five-year-old child. What would she say of you today? Keep going. Don't stop. Hmm. She's really proud of you, though, because there were some times you didn't know where to go or what to do or how to do, but you kept putting one foot outside that door, stepping another foot outside that door, taking yeah. those steps, keep going forward. And keep believing in yourself. Yes, yes, yes. I forgot to tell you, I'm an extreme empath. Did I tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> So the fact is, is when, it, no matter, I love to laugh. I love, love to laugh because in life there's been so many tears and tears are okay, but you can't wallow in the tears. So I love to laugh as much as I can all day long. I, I can laugh at myself. I don't even need anybody else around me. I just find, you know, I can laugh at the stupid thoughts that I have, or, you know, I get distracted by, I'm an Aquarian. So I get distracted. So one of my biggest, biggest things is to stay focused so, I mean, I live in the country and all of a sudden a bird will go flowing past and I go, bird, okay, yeah, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I have to work on staying focused sometimes. So, I just want to thank you, Ayarna. Is it Ayarna? Irina. Irina. Okay, see, now I tell you, I'm bad. I'm so bad with names, I apologize. Irina, um, it has been an honor and it has been my pleasure to have you with me here today. And it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Hold on just one second. It takes a special kind of, per, of individual to dream their thoughts and ideas and turn it into the reality. Irina did just that. She stepped past her fears. She stayed the course and had the courage to follow through to the end. Irina, you've championed yourself. Now we know who you've become. Thank you for sharing your ideas, your thoughts, and your dreams with us here today. Thank you.